How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to show you how to run wires from your ground mounted solar panels over to a structure. In this case I just have 200 watts here on the single 4x4 post. I'm going to bring those down into the ground and then over to that shed which is only about 15 to 20 feet away. Now this is going to pertain to if you have a structure 50 feet, 75 feet, or even 100 feet. It's going to be the same process and we'll talk through a few different factors that you're going to need to consider when doing a little bit longer stretch than what we have here. So let's jump into it and we'll start off with doing a little digging. Now remember, before starting digging, you want to locate any utilities. You don't want to run into any problems, so call 811 or in my state of Illinois, it's Julie, to make sure you're not going to hit any gas, electrical, fiber optics, or any other utilities running through this area. So I'll just be using a ditch shovel since the trench total length is less than 20 feet and I only have to go 12 inches below the surface which will meet code according to the PVC conduit that I'm using. If you're just going to direct bury the solar cables and they're certified for that, which they often are, just know you're probably going to have to go down 24 inches. If you have a longer run, I do recommend renting a four inch wide by 24 inch deep trencher, which will make much quicker work and it won't be nearly as taxing on your body. But just take your time and these ditch shovels are very nice because they have a little bit of an angle to them and it's easy to dig out anything extra in the bottom of the ditch for these shorter runs when digging by hand. Now running the wire, you really need to take your time in selecting the correct gauge of wire. If you have a really long run, 100 feet, 150 feet or more, you need to calculate what your line loss is. Now there's a link in the description over to a calculator on our website, and you can just simply fill out your information according to your actual setup. You need to know the maximum voltage, you need to know what current you're gonna be putting through those lines, what gauge of wire you're going for, and you can swap around to see what those calculations are. Is it aluminum, is it copper? You fill in all that information, and I filled it in for this one, and I'm well below the 2% threshold that we wanna stay under. Now with that said, it's not uncommon for our systems to grow over size. So if you're spending significant time and investment on trenching and getting those wires from your ground mount to your structure, you might wanna actually go one gauge thicker just to future-proof your overall system. For me, I'm gonna make some custom PVC junction boxes and combine them with this little guy here, which is kind of a through-the-wall bulkhead connector. I'm gonna combine these two up, getting one on this end and then one inside the shed just to make a nice destination to MC4 conversion for this setup. And then since I'm using PVC conduit, I don't need solar wire, right? I'm just using THHN single strand, and that's gonna be 10 gauge for this setup, which does give me a little expandability if I need it in the future. So we'll go ahead and make up these junction boxes and then get everything lined up and start connecting it up. I already have one made up. This is gonna be at the ground mount. You can see my fitting for the PVC coming up through, and then here's those MC4 connectors with the pigtails that are gonna go into my T. HHN wire. But let's make up the one that's going to be over inside the shed. It's basically the same just with a little tweak and that is I'm going to go through the back of the box with this inch and a quarter spade bit to get my hole. Then I'm able to get the nipple in there and that's what's going to be connecting up to the other fitting on the outside of the shed you'll see which is an LB fitting. But we need to drill two half inch holes through the top and what these are for is the MC4 connectors. So I'll just go ahead and take the plastic nut off the inside, loosen that up, and then I'll be able to pass through that pigtail with the threaded end and tighten it down on our new PVC junction box. So that's what we're using that bulkhead for is just to transfer over those little MC4 connectors with the pigtails, which they do come with a little gasket as well, which makes it perfect and actually gives a watertight seal to the exterior which is great, especially for the ground mount portion. Then we'll go ahead and just secure that up using a torpedo level, leveling things up, and sinking two screws into four x four posts. On the other end, I have the hole already located from inside and using an inch and a half spade bit, which will pass through that LB fitting. The LB fitting is what we'll be putting through and that helps us with the pull later on. But I'll just start gluing together my PVC and getting that all in place. You want to complete the run of PVC before you start pulling your wire. 
Now I love these DIY projects, but if you want to offset your monthly power bill and tie into the grid, that's probably a professionally installed solution for most of us. A great place to start and where I started was a link in the description and that was just to size my system. All you got to enter is your monthly power bill and a few details on your home and then within a few minutes you'll have sizing for how big of a system you need and then also an estimate on the cost so you can start putting plans in place. And then if you want to go further, they can actually connect you with local installers. You can start getting quotes and start vetting those installers to make sure they're the right partner that you'd want to go with. But let's go ahead and jump back into the project. Now to get the PVC to line up a little bit better here at the ground mount, I need to use my heat gun and warm it up. I pulled things to Together with those clamps and what I'm trying to do is to make a little bit of an offset and just secure those clamps a little bit as we go while I'm heating up to make a nice jog around the concrete base. So now we're ready to start our pull. We'll start at the LBN and pass through the fish tape until we get it at the ground mount. Once it's sticking out I'll take my two conductors, the 10 gauge stranded wire THHN and I'll strip off about two to three inches of copper doubling that back through the fish tape and then wrapping a bunch of electrical tape around it to smooth everything out. Now when it's a one-man operation, you kind of got to go back and forth as you're feeding it through and also I don't have my spools on a rod where they unwind a little better than they are here. But it's such a short run, I can easily do that and snip things off. Then wiring, I mean, really doesn't get much easier than this. And what I use on these applications is Wago 221 lever nuts. You'll see a link in the description for those and all the other parts that we're using for this project. Now these are three wire, but they're specifically the 613s. So they can take 10 gauge wire, which I need for this application. And most Wagos only take 12 up to 12 gauge. Then we'll secure things up. And now I'm going to seal off that LB fitting with some duct steel. Remember, we have an inch and a half hole behind that, so you could get water in there or bugs. So I'm just going to seal things off on the top half here to make it watertight and to reduce the bugs coming in and out at that point. So I missed the install of this, but this is just our junction box on the inside of the shed, and then it goes right through to the LB fitting where it was our destination for the wire pole. So these are just the wires coming inside, which I just need to cut, strip, attach to the Wagos, and then although the sun is going down, hopefully we can test out the system and see if we're getting any uh, solar from the 200 watt panels. And then the only thing I need to be careful of is I do actually need to take my red to the black here just so I have the correct MC4 connector that would align to the panels on the other end and then to my destination which will be a jumper going into an EcoFlow Delta II. So we'll go ahead and plug in the jumper here. I do not have the panels connected yet. I want to get this plugged into the EcoFlow first. So then we have our Delta II, and then that goes to an XT60i connector. So now I'll go connect the panels, and again, we don't have a ton of sunlight, but let's see if we can get a little solar just proving the system is connected. And again, not much, but it shows 22 watts are coming in from solar. So it looks like we got everything connected correctly. So I got a little backfilling to do, but other than that, the project is complete, and I really like the fit and finish install, opposed to having wires just kind of dangling from the solar panels over to the shed, and everything's weather tight as well. Now we did a couple different videos on this overall off-grid solar-powered shed. If you want to see the complete picture of the solar panels, getting the ground mount in place, we'll have some of the trenching in place. How do you size the right system, whether you're going DIY or whether you're going to a plug and play more of a portable power solution. You can check out this video right here. It'll walk you through every aspect of that just in case that project's in your future. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.